Greetings, everyone. We're going to be talking about the indications uh, for GI prophylaxis in the setting of the intensive care unit today. So let's kick it off. All right, so don't, don't be overwhelmed by this slide. I just, you know, I want to make a, a soccer reference here. And basically, you know, the Spanish soccer team, just like they have ticky-tack soccer, they play this beautiful bread and butter uh, that the Spanish national team plays, uh, or, you know, for football, soccer. Um, you know, understanding the indications for PPI prophylaxis or GI prophylaxis in the ICU is a staple in kind of like our medical bread and butter um, as an intensivist or, you know, training in the ICU. So soccer has their bread and butter, just like the Spanish play Tiki Tech, and we have our bread and butter high yield for the ICU, and that happens to be GI prophylaxis, and when do we do it, when do we use it, and so this is the, you know, summation is basically we have the major and minor criteria. The major is any bleeding diathesis, platelets less than 50,000, INR greater than 1.5, or PTT greater than two times the control. If a patient's been on mechanical ventilation for greater than 48 hours, the patient has a history of a GI ulcer, or bleed, traumatic brain injury, spinal injury, burn injury, or if the patient has uh, been using NSAID use or antiplatelet use. So basically, one of those, if a patient has any one of those major criteria, then you can go ahead and start GI prophylaxis. Now, if for minor criteria, they have to have two or more of the following. So they have to have sepsis or and plus or minus greater than one week stay in the ICU, occult GI bleeding greater than six days, or steroid therapy. So in order for a patient to qualify in the ICU with two or more of the minor criteria, it's just basically what we, we listed off. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Let's get into treatment. So right now, when you look at the randomized controlled trials and overall outcomes, the literature supports um, the treatment specifically for GI prophylaxis, it, the, the favorable or the poster child right now is a PPI like a pantoprazole, for example, over an H2 blocker like famotidine. So those are the big two guns that we use. However, you do have a third line. If you cannot um, administer PPIs or H2 blockers for whatever reason, there is some literature supporting the use of sucralfate. So those are the three big ones that we use. And that's pretty much it for this video. So in summary, we reviewed the basics of the major and minor criteria for the indications of GI prophylaxis um, in the setting specific for ICU patients. There are many factors that contribute to whether or not you should be using a PPI or H2 blocker, you know, things out of your control, really, right? Like financial, whether your hospital has a preference or if the patient can't tolerate oral or IV. So all those things come together. Just really, I want you to know that our common treatments are proton pump inhibitors, histamine 2 antagonists, and when refractory, there's some literature supporting sucralfate uh, for GI prophylaxis. So that's pretty much it. This concludes our video, and cheers and best of luck to you as you study. Bye.